711, 713 and 701. General description of gland. The 711 cable gland comprises five major components, these being the back nut, middle nut, armor grounding device, brass pot and entry component complete with red deluge seal. The cable gland is suitable for use with continuous corrugated aluminium metal clad hazardous location cable, MCHL for class 1 division 1 locations. The 713 cable gland is similar in construction to the 711 cable gland but is for use in class 1 division 2 locations and is specifically for use on MC or tech type cables. The 701 cable gland is for use in non-hazardous wet locations for all types of metal clad cables and is supplied with a black deluge boot. The process for fitting this gland is similar to the 711 and 713 cable glands with the exception that the compound potting process isn't required. Assembly instructions are supplied with each cable gland. Please refer to these for further instructions on cable preparation and installation. Cable preparation. Allow sufficient length of cable to enable termination of the conductors into the junction box. Strip back and remove the required amount of outer cable sheath and corrugated armor to expose the inner conductors. Ensure all cable fillers are removed, that is plastic tape, strings and so on. For the 711 and 713, remove a further 7 eighths of an inch or 23 millimeters of the outer sheath for A-size cable glands, 1 and 1 16th of an inch or 26 millimeters of the outer cable sheath for B-size cable glands, 1 and a quarter inches or 31 millimeters for C and C2 size cable glands, 1 and a half inches or 39 millimeters for D size cable glands, and 1 and 3 eighths of an inch or 34 millimeters for E and F size cable glands. For the 701, the cutting length for the removal of the outer sheath should be 1 inch, 26 millimeters longer. As a rough guide, the outer sheath should be removed in line with the edge of the grounding device. Cable gland installation, 711 and 713. Fit an ingress protection, IP washer, if required, onto the entry thread. Fit the entry component into the junction box and hand tighten using the enclosure thread or lock nut. Using a spanner or wrench, tighten until resistance is felt, a quarter to a half turn nominal. Remove the brass pot from the entry. Place the back nut, middle nut and the grounding ring assembly over the cable. Push the cable through the entry component and locate the grounding ring such that it's positioned to ensure the outer edge of the grounding ring is in line with the cut edge of the outer sheath. Bring up the middle nut and tighten onto the entry component until the grounding ring grips the metal armor sheath. Tighten the middle nut an extra half turn with a spanner or wrench. Unscrew the middle nut from the entry component and visually inspect that the armor grounding device has clamped the metal armor. Mix the compound found in the two plastic bags together until they blend into one solid color with no streaks. Once mixed, apply to the conductors and strands within 30 minutes, as after this time, the compound will begin to stiffen as the curing process begins. Spread out the cable cores to enable the compound to be packed into the crotch around the cores. Close the conductors together and bind the ends with tape. Apply compound around and in between the cable conductors, extending no more than 35 millimeters up the cable. Ensure all voids and gaps are filled. Pass the brass pot over the conductors and push down until it engages with the grounding device. Remove any surplus compound from the top of the brass pot and the joint faces. Push the cable into the entry component and locate the brass pot inside the entry. Bring up the middle nut and locate on the entry and hand tighten. Using a spanner or wrench, add a further half turn to the middle nut. To further locate and support the compound and brass pot assembly, hold the middle nut with a spanner or wrench and tighten the back nut until the seal grips the cable and prevents movement of the gland. 
A handy tip is to apply the surplus compound onto the outer sheath of the cable in close proximity to the cable gland. This can be tested periodically to ensure the compound is hard before finalizing the termination into the equipment. Once the compound has cured, untighten the middle nut and check that the compound has cured properly. Hand tighten the middle nut onto the entry component and further tighten using a spanner or wrench by half a turn. Hand tighten the back nut onto the middle nut until it forms a seal around the outer cable sheath. Tighten the back nut using a spanner or wrench by a further full turn. Pull the deluge boot into position if required. The 711 or 713 cable gland has now been correctly installed. Cable gland installation 701 The installation process for the 701 cable gland is different from the 711 or 713 in that no compound part is used. Pass the cable through the cable stop device. If the cable conductors pass through, then it should be left in position. If the cable conductors are too large, then the cable stop device should be discarded. If the cable stop device is required, locate it into the entry and feed the cable through until the cable sheath is in line with the back of the grounding device. Bring up the middle nut and tighten onto the entry component using a spanner or wrench until the grounding ring grips the metal armor sheath. Tighten the middle nut an extra half turn with a spanner or wrench. Unscrew the middle nut from the entry component and visually inspect that the armor grounding device has clamped the metal armor. Push the cable into the entry component and hand tighten the middle nut and back nut onto the entry component. Using a spanner or wrench, further tighten by half a turn the middle nut onto the entry component. Hand tighten the back nut onto the middle nut until it forms a seal around the outer cable sheath. Using one spanner or wrench, hold the middle nut in position whilst finalizing the tightening of the back nut by a further complete turn with another spanner or wrench. Pull the deluge boot into position if required. The 701 cable gland has now been correctly installed.